So what is the verdict on the Fiat 500e EV that I got from Hoovy? Let's find out. Let's get started. There's a lot of banter. It goes back and forth on both sides of the aisle on electric vehicles. Some people get really angry about them. Some people are very supportive of them. It's kind of a, a new wave of things that's coming our way, just like when gasoline cars were first invented. There were people, older generations, some of the older people that were alive at that time, they were advocates that horses work just fine. We don't need these stupid, stinky, loud gas engines. They'll never take off. There's no infrastructure. There's no way this is going to work. And if you exceed 40 miles an hour, your body will explode. You might die. All kinds of crazy things that they come up with that you should not buy a gas engine. And where are we today? Were those old timers back then able to stop the wave of new technology? Nope. Not even an inch. Will we be able to stop the wave of EVs whether we like them or not? No. They're here to stay. There's going to be different iterations of power technology, how they store the energy, the electricity that come down the pipe. But this whole idea here, it's not going away. The one thing I'm foreseeing trouble with right now is acquiring parts. These things are kind of new to the world as far as storing parts on the shelves. There were a lot of models that brands made that were kind of a test run, you know, put out the Fiat 500e, it may take off, it may not take off. They put batteries and different parts in there, not really concerned about keeping it running for the next 30 years, just kind of testing the market, see if they can make the sales, things of that nature. And people are buying these and the Nissan Leafs and the BMW i3s and all various different EVs, different iterations. And they're finding that when they break, who's going to work on them? Shops like mine that focus on internal combustion engines they might take on a few and maybe see if they can offer some services, but there's a big learning curve into jumping into EVs. I foresee in the future there's going to be shops only work on EVs and they'll tell you to take your gas car and hit the road. They don't even touch them. Only EVs. And that's, they have all the tooling, all the test equipment, everything needed to work on these. But just like the battery cells on this car, you really can't go buy brand new ones. There are small upgrades, there's adaptations, things that can be done to the main battery pack. But you can't say, I have three bad cells, go ahead and send me three new ones. There are none. And that was the situation with my Nissan LEAF. We'll show you here in a little bit that the batteries on this Fiat actually use coolant to cool the batteries or to keep them warm or keep them at a stable temperature. The Nissan LEAF has none of that. It's just batteries in a metal box on the bottom of the car. You can't get new battery cells for that one either. There's a lot of upgrades putting newer model batteries on older cars, but the cost is so high, very high. There's stories of people saying in a really hot climate and like in Arizona where the road is literally 140 or 150 degrees. And if you own a Nissan Leaf in that environment, your batteries, that, that heat is radiating right into them and cooking your batteries. You'll see range drop really fast and the batteries will die. They can't handle that kind of heat. So the Nissan Leafs of the earlier generations, that are some of the troubles they had. On the Leaf I used to own, I actually looked into possibly getting it fixed up. It needed some new cells and things. The battery pack was pretty much shot. Because they don't make new battery packs or cells for those, people are hitting the used market. There were many times I would find a wrecked leaf and say, I'll just buy the whole car and I'll get the batteries. Only to find out someone robbed the battery pack out of it. There's such a high demand for them that even a buying a wrecked leaf or an abandoned leaf, they know the value of that battery pack is so high. It's very hard to even find the batteries, even used ones. Mix that with the fact that the, the heat management or the thermal management is not there on an Nissan Leaf. I just couldn't foresee putting all that money into the car. Someone made me an offer I couldn't refuse and I sold it, so it's gone. Now the Nissan Leaf was sold to someone who was going to use it for their child who was in college. 
No, I didn't rip them off and give them some Nissan Leaf that was going to be dead and be useless to them. This child was driving five miles to school, five miles back. And if it could last a few years doing that, the purchaser thought they had gotten their money's worth and they were very happy with those terms. The Leaf could go 40 miles. It's supposed to go 70 to 80. It could only go 40. Even if it degraded down to 10 or 15, it was still usable to that person. They were very happy with the buy. So who knows if it's even operating today, but it is gone. Finding parts for electric vehicles can be very frustrating, and if you do find them, it's very expensive. I remember when Mrs. Wizard and I opened our first shop in 2012. It was quite a leap of faith with me quitting a good paying job and relying on her teaching salary until I could get the shop established. One thing we didn't fully expect when starting the business was the overhead and all the equipment that was needed. I had a lot of tools, but I didn't have everything required to operate a full-time shop. We had to get some items on credit and start the monthly payment cycle. We were able to keep ahead of the payments and pay off those bills, but if there would have been a slow month or two, we'd have been in serious trouble. Have you found yourself in an unexpected financial situation either with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills? Today's video is sponsored by PDS Debt. They have tailored solutions for everyone with over $10,000 of eligible debt. PDS Debt understands debt and strives to help you with your specific scenario. They can provide alternative solutions and help you manage your payments so ultimately you become debt free. Don't let debt ruin your life. Stop waiting and start saving. Get a free debt analysis right now at pdsdebt.com slash carwizard. It only takes 30 seconds. That's pdsdebt.com slash carwizard. That link is in the description below and there it is on the screen. That's again pdsdebt.com slash carwizard. Now back to the Fiat. Now let's talk about this Fiat 500e and what we found with it. The battery pack is already pulled out. Danielson removed it out the bottom. I'll have Mrs. Wizard show you guys around what you had to do to even get ready to pull the pack. You don't just unbolt it and go for it. There's a large plug in the back where it's a, actually a hole in the floorboard that you need to remove so that it's safe to remove the battery pack without getting electrocuted. And then we'll show you what we found inside of it and how cool it is, all the technology. Let's head on into the interior. All right, so here we are in the back seat with Mrs. Wizard. Whoa, Wizard, we're not that kind of channel. Oh, sorry, not, not that way, guys, come on. But this is the back seat, it's folded up, it's very thin, frail little seat. There's this cover that comes off of this hole that's in the floorboard where some cars actually have a fuel pump right here you can access, but that's not the case here. We're actually removing, this is a fuse, a 350 amp main fuse. You lift up on this black little handle, pull it up, it makes the battery safe to remove. This is actually the biggest fuse I've ever seen. 350 amps, that's a lot of power. Look at that guys. Man. And I do know that these packs are 400 volts when they're fully charged. This fuse is rated for 690 or 700 volts. So definitely enough to kill you if you get in there and start messing with things and do it wrong. Let's get this thing up in the air. So underneath the 500E, it's actually 600 pounds lighter now. Looks like it has red blood as well. Let's go ahead and take a peek under this thing. It actually isn't blood, it's red coolant that came from the battery pack. We've already showed you guys the motor and everything. You guys have already seen that on the last video, so we won't go over that. It does look like it's happy to see you, Mrs. Wizard. Um, not in that position, it's not. I'm sorry, dear. No, that's actually some of the cabling or the wiring that goes to the main battery pack. Let's jump back to the middle of the car. So from now on, every EV that you see on the road, you can imagine there's a giant hollow cavity underneath the floorboard, that is the batteries, to run the whole car. So we can see right here, this is the main connection that goes for power to the motor. This is the big boy here, lots of amps and volts go through there. There's also a smaller power connection here, and then there's some electrical communications and things like that that go into the battery. And then here is our coolant port that goes to its own cooling system to keep the batteries thermally managed. Now the hole we just showed you in the interior is actually right here. That's where you remove the plug. A lot of people on the early Chevy trucks, or really any truck, will actually cut a hole in their bed to make it faster and easier to do a fuel pump. Here they put a hole underneath the back seat so you can remove the fuse and make it safer. 
Once you get that removed, then you can start messing with these items here. You start unplugging this stuff and you haven't undid the fuse, you could, you could be in trouble. So, all that's disconnected. Obviously, the battery is removed. That is a big tunnel there, Mrs. Wizard. It is really impressive that they can hold all those batteries in there. Tons of weight. So you guys have been eagerly awaiting the reveal of the battery pack. Let's go ahead and head over to it. So this is our special hydraulic table that we use for removing engines. Danielson actually used them to remove engines from Ferraris. And there's actually a pedal you pump back here and you can actually raise this thing up, 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 up. That's how we removed it from the vehicle without hurting anyone. Very, very handy. This is what sits in that giant cavity a massive battery pack, 400 volts worth. I wanna show you something really funny. I, I saw this sticker and I was like, what? Keep your children away. Keep them away, guys. We don't need them running over here and getting electrocuted. Danger, high voltage, keep the children away. I really hope you're not breaking child labor laws and bringing children into the shop. Yes, please don't have your nine-year-old removing these. That would be very, very bad. You could get in trouble, you really could. So that hole that's in the floor actually matches up to this foam seal right here. I'm not going to install this, but you lift this up just like the instructions say and pull the plug out. Now we've got that out, I'll move it out of the way. And this is like a fiberglass or a plastic shell, I'm not sure what it's made out of, that sits on top of this metal housing and you have to remove all of these bolts and nuts to get the shell off. I thought an Aston Martin had a ton of undercarriage bolts and screws. This thing has tons of shield screws or whatever you want to call this thing. So what does it look like inside the battery pack? How do they arrange everything inside of here? What does an EV battery look like? Let's find out together. This is five feet of battery goodness. There's wires and batteries and wires and more batteries and more batteries and more wires. It is packed in here really tight. So what are we looking at here? Here's where our coolant comes into the battery pack and you can see the hoses run through all the battery modules and keep this thing thermally managed and keep everything from getting too hot, overheating. How does the computer know that batteries are getting hot, cold, or even what's going on with them? There's lots of little black module boxes that are actually doing the monitoring, the eyes and ears of what's going on with each of these battery packs here. That's what these little black modules are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There may be more than that I'm not seeing, but there's a lot of them in here. Each of these little battery modules look like a car battery. This one's a six cell one. Actually all these up front are six cell. But as we go back to the back, they're actually shorter. They're five cells or five S batteries. They're actually laying on their sides where these are standing straight up. This blue tubing is not coolant. It's just a vent to let fumes out so that it doesn't build up gases or pressures inside of here. Right here's our contactors. Whenever you turn on power to go drive your car, you can hear click, click. That's what these things are doing here, actually allowing power to go through this plug and power your drive motor. Each of these little battery packs have individual cells, just like this picture here. And they bundle those up and make this little pack here, 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 here. It's a lot going on. These little flat looking things that are colored orange are actually battery buses that go in between each battery and transmit the voltage and build it up to 400 volts. Now, what is wrong with this battery pack here? It's thought in Hoovy's video that these cells could be bad it's very common on these cells to fail, but that's end up not being what the case was. Some of the cells were not being charged, and it is true that some of the cells were not working, but that was where the big gamble is. Does Hoovy pour out the money, drop the battery pack to find out there's no hope, and he just lost all of his money? That's not what he wanted to do. He had no interest in that. But I could take on that risk and drop the battery pack. If it's bad, you know, big deal. It ended up being the battery control module. The battery pack control module, BPCM is what it's called. It actually mounts right here where these connectors are. It's currently not in this because I've had it boxed up ready to be shipped off to be rebuilt. Yep, a computer module is the problem. Here's a picture of the codes that we found. I sent them to this rebuilder. 
that's actually in Bulgaria. They're the only outfit in the entire world that's offering this service, and it costs 800 to a grand, depending on what they find. I sent them the codes that I found, and they said, yep, that's exactly what's wrong with this battery pack here. Some of the cells are not being sensed or even being seen by the control module, therefore they're not being charged, so you're not reaching full potential of range with this pack. They say that they already know kind of what's wrong. They will rebuild it, and when I receive it back, I can get these cells all balanced. Then the battery pack control module will be able to see all the cells again and bring everything back up to snuff. And very likely it will be back in business again. Since these things are cooled by coolant, they don't fail like the Nissan Leaf battery packs did of the early generations. They can last a long time, 10, 15 years, who knows how long they can go. I could get a lot more life out of these. Now, I mentioned in the previous video this was a 42 kilowatt battery pack. I'm not sure yet. I'm still trying to discover how I had 126 miles of range on a battery pack that should have never had more than 80. It's very likely we get this control module installed. If I see more than that, there's something going on here that maybe it's an upgraded battery pack. I'm not sure. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's possible I receive that module back, bring this all back online, and have a fully functional 500E for quite a long time more. Now again, that was a gamble Hoovy was not interested in taking. He could really lose his tail on it. It'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Now, I'm not a hater of EVs. I'm also not an advocate for them. I don't know where the future is going to go with them. And by the time that decision is made, I'll be retired and moved on. I will not be working on an EV-only shop. That'll be when I'm an old man. But one thing they're going to definitely have to do is have a unified battery technology that works across all brands. Because right now we have, this brand has this type of cell, this brand has that type of cell. You can't buy these anymore, you can't swap these, you can't, it's all proprietary. That makes it really hard for any shop to, to make things work in a lot easier fashion and cheaper. If they can make a unified cell that all EV brands use, that will really unite a lot of these things and make it where you can order new cells. There's thousands of them for sale for any make, for any brand. And it will really increase the longevity. Also, battery technology as far as battery or energy density for batteries is going to have to really improve where you can get a thousand miles of range in a battery pack that's this big. That's when gasoline cars are going to die. These young kids coming up, they don't want to do oil changes. They don't want to do timing belts, water pump. They don't want to mess with that. And I don't blame them. I kind of don't either. And when you can sell them a car, it says, you don't need to do anything. Just drive it. It's going to sell. You plug it in. And when you get up in the morning, you go. And it'll have a big screen with all your social media stuff. You'll be able to keep up with it. And cars are self-driving, EV and gas. Cars are going to be driving themselves in the future. So, I don't know what's all going to happen. I'll, like I said, I'll be an old man by then. But it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, you are kind of an old man already there, dear. I'm Thanks. Sorry. I'm yeah. getting old already. I'm starting down that path, yes. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to get this pack out, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All the tools we use in the shop really are listed for sale there. And if you purchase anything, we get a small cut and really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button here because I just got back from Atlanta filming with Ed Bolian from VinWiki, Cameron from DC MotorWorks. There's a lot of really sweet videos coming out. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.